the user agent that a client sends to the server. So in a way, we're going to take some of these techniques, and some of these techniques may even overlap, you know, and, and both handle a certain thing. And in that, in that case, we have like a fallback, all right? That's why we do the progressive enhancement, because if we have an ancient old phone with a web browser that doesn't know nothing, all right, it probably doesn't know media queries, it probably doesn't know that, it will get the first style sheet. All right, it'll get the style sheet and it will ignore the rest of the stuff. All right, in which case it'll look like a mobile device as opposed to looking like a desktop uh, device. Um, if we even have a, a site, or I'm sorry, a browser that doesn't even know CSS, all right, it will be just plain old HTML. And again, not going to be fancy, but what do you expect if you're working in that environment, right? I mean, I'm thinking like if someone's using a Lynx browser. You know, you go into a text-based browser. You know, of course it's not going to look good, but you're not using that for that reason. All right, so on to the activity. Any questions about it before we begin? The key of the activity is we can do is we can take anything that we did on the client side and use our user agent detection to do it on the server side. For example, we have this, this page, if you remember this. Again, this is largely for demonstration purposes. It's not meant to be the best looking page, but there it is on the desktop. If we view this on a mobile device, it looks way different. So, no background images, links oriented horizontally, um, no image, and I think that might be the only difference. Okay, so let's go and let me copy all this into our web server area here. So I'll go copy and... There we go. Copy and go to <coughs> put that in here. Now, when we access this page, now it's in the web server's root folder. Remember, because I have the IIS web server. And the root folder for IIS by default is C INET Pub WW root. So if I'm going to access this through the web server, I have to type in localhost responsive HTML. And it looks the same. All right. The only difference from this is now I'm accessing it through the web server. Of course, since this is just a static HTML page, it really doesn't matter how I access it. It's going to matter, though, in a minute here when we start making this a PHP page. All right, so let's go in and get rid of their stuff. I just want my code, so when I upload it, I don't upload any of their stuff. One more 
just one more file. Yeah, there's one more file. What? Yeah. Which is? That is uh, start. Oh, okay. There we go. All right. So now, now this folder only has my stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a PHP version of this static HTML page. How do I make a PHP version? What do I need? It needs to have a PHP extension, right? So what I'm going to do is go up here, click around for a while till I find what it is I really want to do. I'm going to turn on file extensions. All right. So I right mouse, copy, paste. I'll go here and I'll remain that, rename this to responsive.php. It's going to yell at me because I'm changing the extension and it's confused, but I know what I'm doing. <laughs> so I'll go and do that. So now we have responsive.php. So how do I access this? Remember, I can't just double click on this anymore and open it because it doesn't really know what to do with it, right? This is a recipe for a web page. This is not a web page. I have to ask the server to process this page and give it to me. Well, how do I process it? My web server's name is localhost. It's in the web server's root directory, so I don't need to supply any directories. But I can type in responsive.php. And it does the same thing. The only difference in this case is I'm getting the PHP version of it instead of the HTML. That's yes. because your server, you downloaded, like the server understands PHP. Like if the server didn't understand PHP. If the PHP, server didn't understand PHP, PHP then you'd be a problem. Then uh, there'd be a problem. It probably would simply show the text of your PHP code. Typically that's what it does, or it says I don't know what to do with this in one form or, or another. <coughs> All right. So now I want to start making this really work. So I'm going to go and edit this in Notepad++. Plus plus. <coughs> All right. And I'm going to open my sample PHP. And I'm going to copy this block of code. This block of code is doing user agent detection. All right. I took this from that detectmobilebrowsers.com, which is a website that generates scripts, which is good because I certainly don't have memorized all the mobile browsers that are out there, but someone does a better job of me, at least, in doing that. And I have this snippet of code. Let's look at this code line by line and make sure we understand it. Again, the point of this class isn't to make you experts in server-side scripting, but you should at least be familiar with some like basic things, all right, so that we can go and do some of the fun stuff that we want to do. All right, first of all, this and this indicates that we are in PHP mode. Yes? You did that outside of the HTML. Can you, do you have to do it outside or can you do it inside? No, I could do it inside as well. Yeah, it's just, this is something I want to do flat out at the beginning uh, of, of this document, so I'm going to put it there. Later on, actually, when we do redirection, we will need it to be in that position. So I, I suppose, thinking back, that's why I put it there, because I know when we do redirection, that needs to be like at the beginning of the script, before we start sending anything back to the client. All right, question or... So it, it can matter, but it doesn't have to. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. These kind of fake tags, pseudo tags, indicate that, that it's, we're, we're dealing with PHP code in between them. Now, the one thing that you'll see is we can pop in and out of PHP throughout our page. And that's one of the most confusing things for like new folks to get used to. We'll see an example of that uh, coming up uh, in, in a few minutes here, all right? But in this case, the block of PHP code goes from here to here. And 
Well, we'll, do, we'll stick with that. All right. This code doesn't send anything to the browser. This code is just doing some internal testing. It's setting a variable. What is a variable? A variable is a storage location. We're going to store a piece of data that we're going to go and use later on. In this case, what we're interested in, in this simple model, is we're interested if we're dealing with a mobile browser or a desktop browser. So, the user agent is the fancy word for the browser that's being used. All right? And this is something that's built into PHP. In other words, that wasn't my creation. I didn't make up those names. That's something that is built into PHP. This is one of the pieces of data that comes with every request. Remember, I said with a request, when the client makes a request to the server, whether they be clicking a link or, or typing in a URL or filling out a form, they send a bunch of stuff to the server. They certainly send their form data, if there is any. They send the URL that they want, but they send other pieces of information, too. They send their IP address, right? Well, that's kind of necessary because it has to make it back to them. Imagine if, you know, there was no IP address, you type something in, that popped up on someone else's screen because they didn't know where to send it to, right? So it has to know the IP address of who to send it back to. It also sends the user agent, which is a browser. So the server knows what software is being used to, to request this web page. And that's what we're doing here. We're taking this built-in PHP function and we're storing it in a variable called user agent. All right? We then have an if statement that, I don't do this too often in my classes, we're simply going to take it on faith that it works. All right? But let's look at the anatomy of an if statement. The anatomy of an if statement is like this. We have the word if. We have in parentheses what's called a condition. And this condition is really long. <laughs> it is 2,000 characters long. All right? We're only going to write conditions maybe up to 1,500. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Our conditions will be much simpler than that. But all conditions are the same in that they can either be true or they can be false. That's called a Boolean expression. A Boolean expression. So we can look and we can say, you know, is the date in the year 2003? If so, we do one thing. If not, we do something else. We can say the IP address. Does that correspond to someone in Ohio or someone in Michigan? If it's Ohio, we do one thing. If it's Michigan, we do something else. All right? So we can do all kinds of tests, and the tests are always going to be those sort of yes or no, Boolean, true or false. This if statement, all 2,000 characters of it, asks the question, is this a mobile browser or not? So conditions are always the same. They start off with the word if. They have a parenthesis at the beginning, a parenthesis at the end, and then some stuff in the middle. This one, we're not worried about the stuff in the middle. But what it does it, is it asks the question, is this a mobile browser? We then have sets of these curly brackets or braces. And we're going to have two sets of them in this case. You're always at least going to have one set. Sometimes you're going to have two sets. The way the SIF statement works is this gets evaluated to either be true or false. If it's true, this is a piece of code that we execute. If it's false, we do the else part of the if statement. So what are we doing here? If this condition turns out to be true, we're setting a variable called browser equal to the value of the word mobile, M-O-B-I-L-E. So there's a little piece of memory where we put the word mobile. If it's false, we do the same thing, except we put the word not mobile in here. 
right? I could have done this a bunch of different ways, but this is the way I chose to do it in this case. All right? So when we get here, we get to line 20, we have a variable named browser, and it either contains the word mobile or not mobile. If we're on a mobile browser, then this block of code gets executed. Otherwise, and that's what the else means, this block of code gets executed. Yeah? Is the if statement 2,000 characters because it's parsing every single possible? Yes. So, okay. Yeah, the if statement is 2,000 characters because it's looking at every possible mobile browser. Is it this one? Is it this one? Is it this one? Is it this? You know, it's going through all possible ones. And we can even like, we can kind of read and kind of figure out what it's doing. Looking for Android there, looking for Avant Go there, looking for, like we last last time, Elaine, whoever she is. Looking for IE Mobile, looking for Kindle, Opera Mobile, Palm, iPhone, yeah. So. You're right. That's why it's 2,000 characters long, because there's a lot of them. And that's why we're not going to write that. We're going to, you know, there, there's folks that have, you know, <laughs> you know, that, you know that, that's why I don't, that's why I don't clear video games, right? I let someone else clear them and post the save file, then I download the save file, right? Because I don't have time for that. So I don't have time to write this if statement. I probably could, but someone else that, that that's their mission in life, to write that if statement, they can do it, and I'm simply going to use it. So when we're here, we're going to have the word mobile in that variable called browser, or we're going to have the word not mobile. And now, it's going to remember that. It's going to remember that for the rest of the page. So anywhere on the page where we want to do something different, if it's mobile or not, we can put some PHP code to test that variable and do one thing if it's mobile, one thing if it's not mobile. So we have to add, <coughs> sorry, we can, the page remains HTML, so we're just going to add in PHP code to those little sections. That exactly. Have. Remember, a PHP file is a combination of some plain old HTML plus some PHP code. All right? And that's like, again, if you look at eBay, you look at Amazon or whatever, we talked about pages being dynamic. Not everything on the page changes. There are certain parts of it that are plain, that are static, that are the same links on the top of the page, you know. But then there's pieces that do change. So we're going to write little PHP scripts to handle the pieces that change on the page based on whether it's mobile or not. Because you can put PHP into an HTML document for like, wait, didn't you do that more for like to get the date and all that? Well, that's exactly what I'm doing now. Right, so but you change this to an actual P. So what's the difference between... You have to say, it has to be a PHP file. Okay. I, can't, I can't leave it as a .html file. That was my question. But for, for, to do this coding above the HTML tag, right? To do the... No, no I, I think you're hearing the opposite of what I'm saying. If you have PHP on your page, it needs to be a .php file. Okay. It can't be a .html so file. So you can never put like a PHP something in an HTML file? Correct. Okay. In, in a file with a .html extension, right, you can't put okay. PHP code. Right. Yes. So this file is sitting on your server. Yes. But somehow it ends up as an HTML file for the person that's looking at it. Exactly. With no PHP. So how does that happen? Well, that, that's the server's job. That, think of this as this is instructions. It's like a recipe. Okay. The server processes this. That's why we have to go through a web server with PHP installed on it for this to work. Because PHP stands for PHP Hypertext Pro Preprocessor. So it pre-processes this PHP document and takes the PHP code and uses that to create HTML. So again, like I, like I like to say, think of this as like a recipe. This is the instructions to create a web page. A recipe you can't eat, right? You have to have someone bring that recipe to life, actually make the dish from it. And that's what the web server does. They take these instructions and creates an HTML document. So you would actually be building the whole website development side just completely in, in, in with PHP pages and all that you don't you're not making any HTML pages at all. That's correct. Okay. That's correct. Okay. We'll look at we'll look at a nice feature of PHP that's called include files that allows us to take a chunk of code and put it so it's only there in one place. Okay. Alright. And the niceness of that 
is um, even if you're not, even if you're doing a totally static web page, those include files are such a big win that I would do it in PHP anyhow. And just for the flexibility if I ever wanted to throw some dynamic in it. All right, now let's go and actually make this page dynamic. Because right now, I'm looking to see what kind of browser it is, but I'm not really doing anything with it. All right, so what could I do? Well, one thing I could do is, if you remember right, this image, all right, this image, I only want to appear on the desktop version. This image here. All right. So here's what I could do. And this gets to be confusing, or this can be confusing. All right. I sometimes want to show that image. I sometimes not want to show that image. All right. So what am I going to do? I'm going to put some PHP code there. What kind of statement am I going to have? I'm going to have another if statement, right? Because sometimes I want to show it, sometimes I don't want to show it. When do I want to show it? I want to show it if it's not mobile, all right? Remember, browser's mobile, browser's not mobile. When do I want to show this image? I want to show this image if the browser type is not mobile. So I'm going to go to, into PHP mode. So if I were to make a negative statement instead of positive, because you could say if, if, uh, if it's desktop, then show it, or you could say if it's not desktop, then don't show it. <laughs> well, um, you will find in coding that sometimes it's better to think one way, sometimes it's better to work with, with another way. Um, the way that, that if statements work, you always have a true part, and you sometimes have a false part, all right? It's kind of awkward if you have an if statement that only has a false part. You can do it, but that's kind of ugly code, all right? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say if browser, one thing. Browser, remember, is that variable that I used up here. I'm using the same name. All my variables in PHP start with a, excuse me, start with a dollar sign. All right. If browser equals not mobile, That's why they move these keys on me. Okay. Let me make sure this works, because I hate to spend an hour explaining something and find out the code's wrong. All right. So let's go and let's make sure that this works. My, it thinks that you're running it. Right? My guess is uh, it's a permission thing. 
it, it's moment because I'm, I'm not administrator here. So I'll do a save as and all right. Yeah, yeah that's it. Yeah, I don't have permission to save it here. All right. Be difficult. What I'm going to do is I'm going to save it on the desktop and copy it over here. Save it on the desktop, and I will copy it into there. Uh, the funny thing is, 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 yeah, you know, this never prohibited any viruses ever, you know, <laughs> and yet it'll keep me from moving my code into, you know. But that's, that's so unintuitive. All right, so there we go. All right, we see it with the image because this is a desktop machine. Let's go and fire up our mobile emulator on my good old. HTC Hero, put in this address, and we do not see the image. So the code works. All right. Let's go and let's make sure we understand what the code is doing. Now it's going to gripe at me every time, so let's go into. All right, what did this code do? Notice I have two blocks of PHP code. I have a block for the if statement, and I have a block for the ending curly bracket. All right, bear with me because this is confusing. What did my if statement look like before? I had an if statement, I had a curly bracket, a PHP statement, and an end curly bracket. All right, so that's how if statements look. Let me write it up on the board. Or actually, let me go and make a new, I'll just do this. We'll make a new document. If statements in PHP look like this. If we have some con some condition. We then have a curly brace. We then have here statements to do if condition is true. And all this is going to be in a PHP tag. So that is kind of what we have up in the first if statement. All right. So in our first if statement, let's look at our first if statement. Our first statement. We have our if, our if, our condition is the 2,000 characters worth. All right. We have our curly bracket. We have our curly bracket. We have the statement that I want to do in PHP. We have the statement I want to do in PHP. And then finally, we have the ending curly bracket for the true condition. So this is the if statement that I'm doing before. And then I have an else. And I have statements to do if it's false. I don't always have to have an else. 